Frith, everyone. So Runio guys, we know it is really just a 19, early 1900 creation, uh, and specifically surrounding uh, Marby and Coomer, the two people. These are like two pillars of the Runio tradition. Uh, and then from there, we have Spiceberger in the 50s, who really kind of like brought together a culmination of a lot of different sources and, and solidified the rune yoga tradition into somewhat a path in the, in the sense that um, the focus is on developing the self and strengthening the willpower and ultimately gaining more power over, over ourselves and the world around us, which is, which, you know, really what it's all about um, and then so from there I, I've tried to um, get all that information and bring it together and then including all the, the years that I've worked with yoga and, and uh, some of the Eastern internal martial arts systems so I'm, I'm trying to bring that all together and solidify a rune yogic path now, as for um, it being called yoga, that's um, it's not really yoga from the standpoint of the Indian tradition, but it does fits well with the rune yoga system or the yogic system merely for the fact that you're holding these daughters, these postures for a prolonged amount of time for physical health, working through some psychological stuff and seeking balance, um, strengthening willpower, you know, um, Unification with uh, the uh, the energies of this the stutter itself. So, like if you're working with urus, it's actually experiencing conscious expansion where you embody that energy. You are the urus. So that's like the layers of the stutters and uh, and the movements. Um, it also fits in the sense that we're working with these. Uh, the Galder sounds or these intonations, which you know, in very real way, is just like the Indians. Uh, tradition of working with mantras. Um, this, the effects of which we, I'll talk about in a later video. I was just wanting to emphasize that those two things, the the, the postures and the and the Galder sounds, are actually heavily influenced from the yogic traditions, and uh, and Spiceberger in particular gives credit to that. While Kumar and Marby before him kind of uh, caged it of, as if it was something that pre-existed Indian yoga. Um, <clears throat> the, another aspect of rune yoga that fits with the yogic traditions is kundalini yoga. And, and so in the first ayat, um, the first group of runes that we work with is really emphasizing working, well first um, bringing awareness to the body's energy, but then ultimately starting to work with it balancing it, building it, getting it moving, directing it, you know, we'll talk about that in later videos as well. Um, so yeah, so those are kind of the, the three aspects that fit nicely with rune yoga. And then after that, I, I kind of bridge it into the runic path, which goes, you know, towards developing um, a lot, a lot, many other things in life. So those three things in particular are the, the ways that I work with runes and actually have it so that it is connected to the yogic traditions, which, you know, in my mind is pretty powerful. Uh, but I'm always trying to focus it from a heathen perspective because that's what it's all about. So, so yeah. So I uh, wish you well, be blessed, and until next time.